I'm loving the new tips that I'm learning each week with our weekly top 10 lists. We've had book recommendations, we've had word tips, we've had general office efficiency, and this week our top 10 is specific to using Outlook. Now most of us use Outlook at work and it takes a significant portion of our time each day. Now as of 2019, a staggering 293.6 billion emails were sent every day and there are currently over 4 billion email users worldwide. So do the math on that, it's several million emails are sent every second. And since it feels like on some days I'm getting all of those emails myself, I needed some efficiency tips and I'm betting that you do too. So make note of them so that you can quickly implement them as your work habits. A quick bonus tip for listening to, to today's video. When you want to pause this video because you're writing the instructions down, just press the space bar. When you're ready to start up again, press the space bar again. So there's an extra YouTube tip for you. So here are our weekly top 10 tips for Outlook. So our first tip comes from Christopher Musso from Toronto. And Chris says that his favorite tip is creating rules so that emails with the same subject line or from the same address, and that would be from one of those emails that you don't really need to answer to or even look at it, they get an automatically sorted into a specific folder. And that's not his general inbox. So if you're struggling how to have um, set up rules in Outlook, search around in YouTube for the video, but you should be using rules in Outlook. That's the number one tip. Number two comes from Kalinda Dubo in Ottawa. Kalinda uses the calendar category for her calendar and she colors it. Now I'm willing to bet that you, a collective O oh, just went, oh, what a great idea. So she customizes the colors to help her identify any recurring meetings, any executive meetings, personal time, and time she has reserved for specific tasks. This way, when she looks at her calendar, she can quickly see that when she has double and triple bookings, because let's be honest, sometimes that happens, she can easily see what can and can't be moved based on the color and where she needs to put an additional focus for prep time. Since we're all in our calendars a lot, I'm willing to bet that having it color coded makes perfect sense to you because it makes sense to me. It's such a huge time saver. Michelle Frame from Nanaimo was so happy to be included in last week's top 10 that she sent another tip. I love all these tips for this week. Number three is about using templates, which you also know I'm a really big fan of. So Michelle creates a template, you're gonna like this, that prevents recipients from forwarding the message, something that would be confidential, or using reply all, which drives me crazy. And we know that there are people that forward confidential messages and use reply all all the time when they shouldn't, right? So Michelle uses a forwarding template for all of her management meeting agendas. And she does caution that this isn't foolproof because there is someone who will copy and paste the contents all the time. But what it does do is stop accidental forwarding of confidential information. So check out YouTube for instructions, but I can tell you that if you can't find them, Michelle actually took the time to write them out and send them to me. So if you're interested in getting the written out instructions, just email me and I will forward you uh, Michelle's attachment. Karen Sauer sent numbers from four and five tips and she lives in Abbotsford, BC. So, so far all her contributions are Canadian, but it won't stay that way. Her first tip is also about using templates. So it's similar to Michelle's tip, template. And she uses a template for recurring messages and calendar invites. So to create and save a template, just create your new email message, then use file, save as, Outlook template, and then file name. So just name it to whatever you want. You don't need to save it after that. So when it's time to use the template you've just created, this is a little bit more complicated. Go to new items, more items, choose form, user templates, and then select the form. Now I know that sounds really difficult, but with if you write those steps down, remember use the pause bar, uh, before you know it, they will come up absolutely easily to you. Now her next tip is number five, is using a task instead of a calendar entry to enter those items that don't have a set date or those items that you need to work on over a period of time. So what Karen does is she sets the to-do bar for tasks to have them always visible beside her calendar. Now I'm gonna give you a tip a little later on exactly how to do that. You can also set reminders and snooze functions for these tasks. So put your tasks in your calendar. 
Diane Fulton from Orillia, Ontario. And we were chatting earlier this week about multiple meetings. And what she typically likes to do is copy the meeting to the next day and then change the dates. Then she doesn't need to retype all the information. So naturally we were thinking there has to be a shortcut for that, right? And of course, like a good admin, Diane went looking for it. And it's as simple as you would expect. Create the appointment, do control C, which is copy, control V, which is paste, or another way is you can open up your meeting, edit it as needed, click the invite attendees and send. So you're not retyping all of that. Number seven is representing the US this week as our tip comes from Lori Knowles and she's in Fort Worth, Texas. Lori's new tip is to insert her boss's calendar when someone asks her, when is the boss available? So when they email her saying, you know, when is the boss available? What she does, she takes their email, clicks reply, attach item and she attaches the calendar then it will prompt you what you want to send and just follow the prompts and voila you've inserted your boss's calendar into the email number eight is from me i like things to be neat and efficient as you know so i want to share how you can reduce your mailbox size i know that some of you have everything you've ever sent or received in your email and while i understand that in principle we need to clean up our email as well so the best place to start is to open the mailbox cleanup tool. So in Outlook, choose File, Info, Cleanup Tools, and Mail Cleanup. File, Info, Cleanup Tools, Mail Cleanup. The first thing you wanna do is view the mailbox size. Choose that option. What we'll do is it will scan your mailbox and all of the subfolders. And you can then see which folders are the problem and then clean them up. Now, if you're connecting to Exchange, you're going to see a couple of options, one for local data and one for server data. They're both tabs. Only look at the local data tab. Ignore the server data tab as any changes that you will make will automatically be made on the server for you. Next, pick the options to find older or larger items. You can sort by date, you can sort by size size. You can clean them up directly from the results. If you just want to delete them, get rid of them and clean up your Outlook mailbox size. Now, the last step is check the size of your deleted items folder and empty the folder if you need to or get rid of some of the older things. Now, the last two tips are keyboard shortcut commands, and they were actually submitted by quite a few people. So we won't give shout outs on those, but a lot of you gave me the shortcuts, which I love, as you know, because I tell you all the time, I'm a, sh a keyboard can keyboard shortcut fan, I find that a lot easier. My fingers are already on the keys as opposed to moving to my mouse or my trackpad. That's just me. I'm faster on the keyboard. So number nine is simple, but a huge time saver. It's for a meeting request. It's control shift Q. I don't know where the Q come from. Query maybe. Control shift Q is for the meeting request. And number 10, which is to show or hide the to do bar, which we talked about earlier, is quite handy. It's Alt F2. So if you want to see it all the time, turn it on by Alt F2. If you just want to shut it off for a minute, Alt F2. And there you have your top 10 fabulous tips for Outlook. Please make sure that you use them to make yourself more efficient. Add others in our comment section below this video and subscribe to my weekly uh, top 10 lists on, on my YouTube channel so that we put you on the right track. See you next week.